This is the Lumix S5 II, which is maybe the best value modern camera that is currently in production. I've had this camera for the last six months or so, so this video isn't sponsored, but here are my honest thoughts. Now, while this video isn't sponsored necessarily, I did receive this camera from Lumix uh, in partnership with a thing I did with them over the summer. And this combination is what I currently own. The other lenses here are on loan from Panasonic. Once I kind of started using the camera, I just really wanted to have some other lenses. I asked if I could borrow some and thankfully uh, they were kind enough to let me use some of them. So I have the 24, 35, 50, and 85 S prime lenses. Those are not mine to keep, but they are on sort of like a long-term loan of sorts. Now, I wasn't one of the people that went to Japan. I'm under no obligation or contract or anything to make this video currently, but I did want to put out my actual thoughts after using this camera for, again, the last six months. Now, I will say right off the bat, this camera is obviously a hybrid photo video camera, but I would definitely place it leaning more into the video end. It doesn't necessarily do poor in photography, but as a photographer myself, I'm gonna focus more on that aspect because this camera is incredible for video. It is amazing, it has great autofocus, it has 6K open gate, it has a lot, a lot, a lot of stuff. So much so that I am highly considering making both my top-down shot and my uh, talking head shot right here both with a, an S5 II. I just love the images that come out of these things and have been using this as my top-down angle for a long time now and really kind of would love to have just some consistency there. So if you are considering purchasing this thing for video, that is a hearty, hearty yes, buy this thing for video. Uh, but I think that a lot of people aren't really talking about the photo capabilities of this thing. And since that is my primary area of expertise, that's what I'm definitely gonna focus on in this video. So we can talk about the ergonomics, we can talk about the flip screen, the viewfinder, all that kind of stuff. You can see a lot of people talking about those things. I do think that the camera is laid out well. I think that for its price point, which is, absolutely absurd during some of the holiday sales and things. This camera was coming in, I think like 1600 bucks or something, which for a modern full frame camera with phase detect autofocus is just absolutely nuts. Now I've done a separate video specifically on a really, really cool feature on this camera that I don't know if will be out by the time I make this video or not. But one of the amazing things out of this is the fact that you can put your own LUTs into this but usually that means you can bake it into the video footage, but there is a way to bake that into your JPEGs. So I've never had photos that turn out in camera as well as I've gotten these to look, even with the Fujifilm stuff. So for something that I'm able to literally put my own preset on and send people photos and things without editing them, it is the first camera that I have been more than happy with the results that come straight out of the camera with absolutely zero editing. And so I think that's a major, major thing that this camera has going for it. If you're someone that wants to use the camera, share things on social media, maybe you don't even want to edit and you can just buy someone's LUTs or presets. Mine are available below if you're one of those people and have something in camera that is as close to a professional edited look as I've ever gotten out of a JPEG file. Now, another thing that this camera has going for it is the fact that, first of all, this uh, kit lens, while it's not gonna be great for portraits and things, for travel stuff, 20 to 60 is a really good focal length. And for a kit lens, this thing is incredible. But the other thing that I keep seeing in uh, on B&H and things is that you can buy some of these S Prime lenses in a bundle with this camera. And as you can see, these things are all almost identical in size and they're very lightweight. They're all F1.8, so not the fastest lenses out there, but they are incredibly lightweight. The autofocus is very snappy. The look you get out of them is great, very consistent. And so 
I have really leaned on, especially when I was using this for weddings. I shot a ton with the 85. I shot a ton with the 24. And so for a modern mirrorless, again, full frame camera, you can pick up a full kit of this stuff that is going to be very consistent, very lightweight for relatively inexpensive. And I think that as a photographer, that is one of the biggest things that this camera has going for it is that Yes, I will say, and we'll get into the autofocus, but the autofocus is good enough for sure. You can just get a really, really good set of lenses for relatively inexpensive. And then if you wanna to go to the nth degree, this is an L mount camera, so you can put Leica lenses on this thing. You can obviously adapt other lenses and uh, Sigma is obviously part of the L mount alliance, so they make native lenses for this mount. So in terms of lens mounts that are modern out here, we have Sony with their E-mount, which is incredible. You have Sigma and Tamron and all sorts of other third-party manufacturers that make lenses for that. And the L-mount is growing significantly. So it has just a ton of lens options for this system. It's probably second only to Sony in the modern mirrorless game. Now, this camera is 24 megapixels. That is not a ton. Obviously, it doesn't give you a ton of flexibility in cropping. But if you are someone like myself that generally has used a mid-20s megapixel camera for a long, long time and have just learned not to need to crop much, that is more than enough for the vast majority of use cases. I think that for weddings, that really is kind of like the ideal. I know that sounds silly as someone that has like a 100 megapixel Hasselblad and a 50 megapixel GFX camera and multiple 60 megapixel 35 millimeter uh, cameras, but you don't need those things. Those are just luxuries. So the 24 megapixel, if you are not someone that crops a lot, it is the thing you need as a wedding or portrait photographer. I found the low light abilities on this camera to be very, very good. I definitely shot it up to, I think 12,800 with really good results. I think the sensor, again, does really well in those situations, has a decent amount of dynamic range too. I found that I was able to recover highlights and things really well. The colors are a little bit different than I'm used to, but I was able to easily get great results out of this thing. And generally, especially for the price point, I find this body to be just what I would expect out of something like this. There are a lot of custom dials and functions that I uh, just work really well. I use the A off on button as use back button focus for my workflow. I do wish this button was a little bit bigger, but having it right next to the joystick makes it all right. But that's honestly probably my main ergonomic gripe is I just wish the AF button was a little bit bigger. Now, getting into autofocus, which is I think the biggest thing that is the selling point for Lumix to have made it into a viable place in faster paced environments. Uh, I'd used other Lumix cameras, not extensively, but a little bit in the past, and obviously have used the Leica SL2, SL2S, those cameras, which I've talked at length about just not being pleased with the autofocus results in those. This is definitely improved and I, I, I'll keep saying it, it is good enough for professional use. Is it as good as some of the Canon or Sony stuff that I've used? For photography, it's not there yet. I have found that it just, it, it's not as sticky as the other autofocus things. So in the modes that I'm using, uh, I really like to be able to sort of use it in a way that my uh, range finders, and this is how I have my Sony camera set up as well. So I have it in tracking and human detection. That means that I have a box in the center of the screen where I can use this on people or objects, and I can go to a specific thing, I can hold down the autofocus button, and I can just move the camera around, and it will generally stay on that object. It's probably closer in line to the Fujifilm stuff. It's so it's it's good. It's just not like the best in the world, but it's definitely good. It's going to track things well. Generally, you're not going to have any issues when people are walking towards me. I didn't have any issues. It's mostly when you're doing kind of extreme things that I, I would assume most people aren't going to be doing that much. And I also find that if it has a face, it does a really good job of tracking that face. It's more of just when there are other objects, sometimes the specific thing on that object you want to focus on, let's say it's a lens like this and I just wanna focus on uh, where it says 24 on here. Sometimes it will do a great job and stick on that, but other times it will kind of default from that 24 on here to the whole lens itself. So it's just one of those things where like, it just 
not as good as some other things, if we're being completely honest. I generally find the autofocus in photo mode to be pretty snappy too. It locks on pretty quickly and can move between subjects really well. When you're on the extreme, 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 so you're at like minimum focus going to infinity or you're at infinity trying to focus on something that is at close to minimum focusing distance, that's kind of a stress test for any camera out there. So overall, I think my biggest concern and biggest intrigue out of this camera was going to be how well it performed in the autofocus world. And again, I will just state that it's not the best I've ever used, but it is good enough to do the job for the vast majority of people. I did do a side-by-side -side test that I'll see if I can find that I sent to Lumix just to see like, hey, is this normal? Where I put the cameras right next to each other and did the exact same movements with the a7 IV and then this camera back to back because I think those cameras are relatively comparable. The a7 IV, again, was just a little bit stickier than this camera, but it just wasn't something that was going to like ruin my photos or anything, uh, if we're being honest there. So I hope this thing made sense and was helpful to you, uh, just giving you my like realistic thoughts after using this camera, and especially as someone that has multiple other cameras, cameras are coming through my office, feels like bi-weekly at this point. So I feel like I have a pretty good perspective of what this camera is, who it's the best for, all those kind of things. And my honest opinion is, is this camera good enough for professional photography? Absolutely, for all the things that I do, this is definitely good enough. But if I'm being honest in the hybrid world, this feels like a kind of like 65, 35 video photo camera. So if you are someone that is primarily photo, you're gonna be doing photo 99% of the time. It is still probably the best camera for the money, the best bang for the buck, but there are going to be other cameras that are going to perform better for photography. That being said, in video, for my use cases, there is definitely no other camera that has a better bang for the buck, I guess, in terms of all of its recording options. I find this thing an absolute joy to use in video mode, for sure, and Again, I've really liked using it in photography mode as well. So let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. What do you think about these things? I think that Linux has definitely put themselves on the map and they've done a really good job of frankly marketing their stuff. Uh, the fact that they were uh, able to sponsor a video to get me this camera, allowed me to make some more content with it and then uh, they've loaned me lenses. I mean, they're doing a good job of pushing this stuff out there, but I'd love to hear from some of you, especially if you have used this camera for photography, what are your thoughts on it? I definitely don't see as many people talking about this in the photography world as I see it in video and I think that makes a lot of sense. So if you wanna check out my original review, you can check it out up here. Check out more of my L-mount stuff up here. Subscribe if you haven't already and I will see you in one of those videos.